Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and we're going to talk again about gatekeeping. And we're specifically going to talk about a new view, a new window on gatekeeping that I recently saw that helped me understand gatekeeping a little better. And uh, so I want to get into this and talk a little bit further. I'm going to talk a little more deeply about gatekeeping. All right, so gatekeeping is a huge topic in tabletop role-playing games. It's primarily the biggest The biggest issue is in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Um, and it, it's been around forever. But, you know, basi- basically the Edition Wars are a significant portion of, of gatekeeping. And so, um, so basically you have this situation where uh, essentially, you know, gatekeeping is a huge deal. So right now, like, oh, let's talk about FLGS. This is a perfect example of gatekeeping, right? So friendly local game shop, that term came out because so many local game shops were not friendly. And there is this discussion right now in the history of Dungeons and Dragons when women would come into a local game shop when somebody who was different from a different uh, preference or orientation came into a, a game shop and you know was open about it, um, that they would be pu- you know pushed out either very subtly or very directly, right? Like you're not welcome here. Like, and that not welcome here that could be a frown, that could be ignoring you and not asking you what you need or want in the shop. That could be somebody saying, "Oh, all the games are full." You know, like we we allow you know people to jump into games of D and D that are here, but all the games are full now. And you're like, "Aren't there two open spaces?" Well, those are saved somebody for next week or whatever, right? So there's this issue of uh, the question of gatekeeping in in Dungeons and Dragons, and right now, right, there is still gatekeeping going on, right? So one of the things, Strixhaven, right? Uh, I think it's page eighty. There's this one page, and it shows two people, and that the, the attributes about the two people really upset a lot of people. They're like, oh, this isn't Dungeons and Dragons because these people aren't the same orientation as me. You know, it's not Dungeons and Dragons. I'm strict saving bad, right? Like, and there was a huge eruption in the in the community over this, right? So, so, and again, there's a, like, strict saving won't be allowed at my table because there's this prom picture in it. You know, like, so, like, gatekeeping is a real thing, right? So, I've talked about gatekeeping before, right? And to me, it's incredibly clear that gatekeeping is wrong, right? Like, there shouldn't be any gatekeeping in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition or for any, for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, let's get rid of gatekeeping. It's not valuable, right? Like, we don't want to gate people out because they're the wrong gender, they're the wrong orientation. Because, you know, gatekeeping is bad. Gatekeeping equals bad, right? I've said that before, but I recently saw something that helped me understand gatekeeping better and made me think again, right? This is another principle. Like, so when when I talk about Dungeons & Dragons, I'm talking about principles, and I'm talking about those principles being layered and hierarchy, right? This is the deep end of the pool, right? And the reality is, like, you're not going to, like, I do Dungeons & Dragons meta commentary. I don't just talk about, I just don't do D&D commentary. I do D&D meta commentary, right, about the industry, about what it means to be a dungeon master, about what it means to be a player, and not just the mechanics of the game. Like, actually, you know, if you want to know what the best subclass is, right, there are people who will do that for you, right? Like, you're not going to find that here, right? I'm talking about D&D meta, right? So, So, basically, one of my principles is don't stop thinking, right? And that, and that's one of the reasons why I believe this is, I think the reason people think Dungeons and Dragons is a game and don't think it's unbound identity and unbound immersion and one of the greatest achievements in American history is because they stopped thinking, right? They've stopped thinking about Gary's legacy. They've stopped thinking about um, history of America. They've stopped thinking about psychology. They've stopped thinking about culture, right? They stop thinking. They're like, it's just a game. This is just shoots and ladders, right? And I, I just, I'm opposed to it. I'm opposed to ever stopping thinking. And this has grand ramifications, right? What, where does this come from? Why do I keep thinking about things? Well, I'll tell you right now. The world wants to tell you that the things that are happening now have happened before, right? I've been listening to this dude on, uh, on YouTube. He talks a lot about saying, hey, everything that's happening right now is an echo of what happened in Rome. And I'll tell you right now, this dude's brilliant, but he's 100% wrong. I truly believe the world we're living in right now is 100% unique and special, right? This is shockingly unique and special, right? And what what's happening here, right, is that um, is is that 
you know, we, we flew in 1903 and we were on the moon in 1969. The acceleration of everything that's happening, we're, this ain't an, this, America ain't a Romeco. There's fundamentally different things happening now. The world is fundamentally different. I believe that, right? All right, so let's talk this through. So I recently saw a movie called Mixtape, and it made me see gatekeeping in a different light at a deeper level, okay? So one of the things that really shocks me about gatekeeping is there are people in the community right now, they're in the D&D not community, right? So let's talk about it. D&D now, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. D&D dead, then. D&D 1E, 2E, 3E, 4E, okay? That's D&D then. D&D not, games that are copies of Dungeons and Dragons 1E, 2E, 3E, 4E that are not Dungeons and Dragons, okay? Copies of the D&D then games, right? So in the D&D not community, you have people who are literally putting Gatekeeper on their chest. They're wearing it on t-shirts. They're putting it up as their, their banners, right? And I'm like, this is crazy. How on earth can, you know, this is really outrageously ununderstandable. It's, it's, it's bonkers. I, I don't understand how people could be doing this. How could people be taking something that is clearly negative and claiming it and putting themselves, putting it on themselves, right? Well, I just saw it in the movie Mixtape. I, I saw, I, when I try to relate to these people who are saying, I'm a gatekeeper. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Like, why on earth would you identify this for yourself, right? And when I looked at it, I couldn't think of any reasonable person saying, I'm a gatekeeper and wearing that as a badge of honor, right? But the movie Mixtape showed it to me, right? And I'm going to, so warning, spoilers for the Netflix Mixtape 2021 movie. The movie is about an orphan, okay? A girl whose parents died in the, in the late 80s. And in the late 90s, 10 years later, she is trying to listen to every single song on a mixtape that they left. And she has to gather the songs up, okay? And so when she goes to gather the songs from the, from the mixtape her parents made, right? And listen to these songs so that she can understand them better, she, can't, she has to go to a record store right? She goes to this super cool, super hip record store. And in the record store, she meets the quintessential, uh, you know, vinyl fi vinyl record, you know, person named, and he is the, he is the record store. He's just a worker at the record store, right? He doesn't even own it, but he keeps the vibe at the record store. And I know they didn't use the term vibe in 1990, in like 1999, right? Actually, this movie does happen in 1989, and 1999, her parents died like in 1989, okay? So this is happening right before Y2K. And so what it says in the movie is that this guy named Anti is the record store owner, okay? Now listen closely, right? I'm sorry, he's the record store worker. He works in the record store. And this record store has a vibe. They're like, hey, if you come here, you can buy The Clash, you can buy The Cure, you could buy the Rolling Stones, and you can get them here on vinyl, right? And uh, you can listen to them on your record player, right? And if you come here, you ain't going to find no Debbie Gibson, right? You are not going to find any glam rock. You know, you're not going to get a Poison record here, right? This is for rock and roll, baby. This is for the scene. This is for, you know, rate, you know this is for people who are rock and roll, right? No pop crap here, right? It's just rock, right? And so Auntie is very much a gatekeeper, right? He's a gatekeeper in the shop, and he is not keeping people out of the shop, right? He is not creating an FLGS. He's not do, creating a friendly local record shop. He is not, uh, he, he is absolutely not doing this. Um, basically, he, he is not keeping a friendly, friendly local record shop. He is keeping uh, a local record shop who will definitely keep you out if you don't want rock and roll, right? If you want pop, you're not going to find it here, and we don't want your money. He's a gatekeeper, right? But he is very much a good guy in the story. He is lifted up as a hero and a helper and an ally to the main protagonist, this orphan whose parents have died, and he becomes very important to helping her complete her quest. He is presented in the movie 
as a good guy. And I was like, and get this, this movie was written and directed by females. And so these females are holding up in this store, in my opinion, a female director and a female writer, right? Female director and female writer are both saying gatekeeping could be good. By putting this fictional character in here and setting him up as an ally of the main protagonist, they are saying, saying very clearly, gatekeeping can be good, right? And I have never seen why somebody would possibly want to attach the label of gatekeeper to themselves, right, as clearly shown than in this movie, Mixtape. It's the first time I have ever seen a gatekeeper presented as a hero, right? And it was shocking. I was shocked. I was like, these are woke people who are making this movie. This is a fe you know, female director, female uh, writer. This is a very modern, very... This movie had a wheelchair bully in it. This is a woke, woke movie, right? And they were like, "Oh yeah, gatekeeping's fine, as long as as long as the parameters of the gatekeeping are correct." Now, what was the parameters of this gatekeeper? He was saying, "Hey, I don't care if you're white or black. I don't care if you're straight or not straight. Right? I don't care. You know, I don't care about your race. I don't care about your preference. What I care about is, do you have good taste in music?" Right? And do you have bad taste in music? And if you got bad taste in music, you out. You excluded. We're keeping you out. I don't want you here. I don't want your money. Right? Don't run, don't run up in my shop and ask for a Debbie Gibson tape. Right? A Debbie Gibson, you know, I don't want it. Right? And it really is quite fascinating. And I was like, wow, this is really something, you know. So, um, so I had never seen a gatekeeper presented as a hero in any story. Right? which helps me understand why there are members of the D&D Not community right now slapping Gatekeeper on, on t-shirts, slapping it on their YouTube thumbnails, and owning it, owning this incredibly negative word, and owning it like it's a good thing, right? This movie mixtape really helped me to understand why some people would be into Gatekeeping. I also have to admit, right, like, I have to think about this, like, okay, where are we landing here, right? Let's say, and I could see that there might be some gatekeeping that almost everybody would be comfortable with. Here's a good example, right? Let's say you're, uh, you have a gardening club, right? And uh, you say, hey, this is the Westbrook uh, Organic Gardeners Club, right? And so somebody comes in and they're like, hey, um, I, you know what I like to do to grow tomatoes? I like to use uh, pesticide. Right, and I like to you know, squirt a bunch of chemicals on it. And you're like, hey, this is an organic gardening club, right? So we can use manure, we can use compost. Everything wants to be environment, environmentally friendly. And the person's like, nah, ch you know, scrap out all that noise. You can go kick rocks, man. I, I squirt chemicals, and I want to tell everybody in your, on my on my tomatoes, and I want to tell everybody in your gardening group that chemicals are great, right? Like, well, you're gonna get a gatekeeper there. You're gonna get a gatekeeper there, right? So. Here's the thing, I want to clarify my gatekeeper bad stance because I've seen new evidence, right? New, new points of data, right? And it makes me think, right? And so to me, if you are gatekeeping, you, are, you cannot gatekeep. You cannot gatekeep about things people can't control, right? It, it, how, you know, the gender a person's born, born with, right? If you want to try to gatekeep them out because they're the wrong gender, that is wrong, 100% wrong. If you want to keep, uh, uh, you know, keep somebody out because of, because of the color of their skin, that is 100% wrong. They have no ability to change that, right? If you want to keep somebody out because of their preference, right, who they choose to love or, or not love, that is not your concern, right? Like it, it that is wrong. You can't say, hey, I, you know, only straight people get to play. That's ridiculous. That is completely 100% wrong. Right? However, if people are making choices, right, and they're saying, hey, I want to, uh, you know, um, I want to only use electronic dice rollers, right? So somebody comes into the FLGS and the FLGS is like, hey, everybody's welcome. Take a seat at the table. And they're like, hey, I'm not going to roll real dice here. And like the, you know, the shop's like, well, you know, we have dice. Like, we don't use apps here. Like, you know, part of like 
being here is maybe you like to give some money to the shop and buy some dice at least, you know. And uh, they're like, no, all our play, you know, we, we're bringing six new players in and uh, we want you to give us a, a DM. And uh, oh, and, and guess what? We also just use DM, D&D Beyond, right? And, and we don't even, uh, we, and we're not going to buy any, um, we're not going to buy any, uh, any books at your shop. We're not going to buy any dice at your shop, right? And, you know, they, they want to play D&D in the shop. But they're saying all our players are just D and D Beyond, and we use the electronic dice roller on there. So we're not going to give the shop a dime for dice, and we're not going to give the shop a dime, the di the shop a dime for any books either. And we're going to encourage others that say, "Oh, you, you know, you got six books, and you have to. And it's all ha ha heavy in your backpack. You suck. Like, why don't you just get it on a D and D app, and we'll just, you know, take this space and give the and give the shop nothing, right? I think you can gatekeep them. You can be like, hey, nope." you ain't here, like, get, you know, don't sit down, like, bye, right, and the reason why is they're making choices as people, we all get to make choices as people, right, and wherever we have the free choice, right, I, I, I'm kind of thinking you would gatekeep there, right, and I'd love, and frankly, I would love to just be able to say gatekeeping bad, it's a lot simpler, you know, there's no nuance, you can just get right in there, say what you want to say, you know, but the real the reality is, I hate it when people kind of try to cram my opinion into an un not unnuanced stance I don't actually have, and I, and I don't like saying, yeah, there's some circumstances where gatekeeping is probably useful, right? But the reality is, if you're paying attention and you're dealing with data that you receive on a on a daily basis, gatekeeping be useful. Useful. That's my opinion. What do you think? Love to hear your thought. Let me know in uh, in the comments below please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.